Hi, this is Bev at Bev's Creating with Love and Whimsy. And I'm just going to take a few minutes to sew a signature into this little mini book that I'm working on. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the cover before we get started. This was actually a um, manila mailing envelope, the brown manila mailing envelopes that I took a piece of off. And I decoupaged just a piece of paper that I had printed off with a printable. I decoupaged it to the front, and then I decoupaged some music paper or um, book page type paper into the centers. So decoupage on both sides. I let it dry really well overnight, and then put another coat of decoupage on the next day. I could have used any kind of a uh, medium like that just to give it that glossy shine, but it ended up feeling really, really nice. It's very thick. I don't know if you can tell by me just um, tapping on it, but it's a very thick cover, and I think it's going to make a nice little pocket journal. I'm kind of uh, going towards saying this is going to be like a, like a, um, maybe a music director's journal that he would carry, he or she would carry in their pocket or bag. And this cover being nice and sturdy, it should keep it safely tucked away. So I really like the way it turned out. I think I'm going to use that process uh, more often in my journal covers. It just really feels nice and strong. Hoping I can get holes through it for my signature since this is the first time I've tried it. So that's my cover. And my signature pages are also kind of musical and um, vintage-like papers. They were printables. I've also got some copy-dyed paper in here, some lined paper, some that has maps. It was a, a nice little uh, printable, actually two or three parts from one designer, and I kind of put them all together into one book. And I will put the link to that designer's Etsy page in the um, comments. So I'm taking these pages. Let me make sure I've got them all in the upright position. And that one is that one. Oh, I think that'd be a pretty front page. I might keep that one out and put that one there. And that's a copy dyed paper that we have here in our store. I'll also link that for you. Another page, upright, upright. That's upright. So to make sure if there's any uh, writing or decoration that it's going in the right direction. I don't think the map really matters, but it is going in the right direction over there. And yeah, I think that's going to be good. So if that side was good, then this side is good. I'm going to put that in there. Tap those down. Um, it's fairly even. That one page seems to be sticking out. Let's see how that fits in my book. Yeah, I think it fits in there really nice. I could trim it a little bit, but I think I'm going to actually leave it. All right, so I'm going to take these pages, and I'm going to leave it as one signature. I could divide it into two, but I'm going to leave it as one signature and put it into the center of the spine of this cover that I made and clip it in so it'll stay nice and sturdy in there while I'm making my signature holes. So I'm just using these clips that I think I got these at the dollar store. I'm not sure they serve the purpose, but you can use any kind of a clip like that to hold your papers in place. All right, then I'm going to take my ruler and a pencil or pen or whatever and make some marks. I want to get into the center of my pages, which in this case I've got a five inch journal so two and a half is the center and make a mark and then I'm going to come down about five eighths of an inch and make a mark on the top and five eighths of an inch and make a mark on the bottom and that's where I'll put my holes for my needle to go through Sewing, sewing in this signature. I'm using this old vintage awl. I love it because it fits in my hand so nicely. I might have to stand to do this, but we're going to see because this is really, really a strong cover. 
All right. I'm going to just go down and see if I'm getting through. It feels like I might be getting through. Check the back. Not yet. Give it some more. Maybe use two hands. <laughs> that is a strong cover. I could use my crocodile, but I don't really want to have holes quite that big. There it goes. Can you see it coming through the other side? So there it is. And my needle should go through that nicely. So that's the center. And I'm going to get this top one or bottom one, whichever one it is. Do the same thing. That's a nice, strong cover. I'm really, I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. It's hard to get through, but like I said, if you want to use your crocodile to punch holes, you can. They just leave such a large hole for this little book. I really didn't want to have great big holes on the outside. And the top one, and because I've held it in with these clips, it's not going anywhere. So I'm not worried about it moving around while I'm cutting these holes. You want to make sure you've covered your desk with something so you don't destroy your workstation. You can also use a telephone book, an old telephone book or something, and slide your spine right down into some openings in the book and use that as kind of like a cradle. I'm just, it's a small book, so I'm not really concerned with it too much. There's my three holes. Now I'm going to take waxed cord and I'm going to measure off three lengths of my book. One, two, three, and that should give me a nice... Um, three hole pamphlet stitch which to me is the basic stitch for a small book like this and I've got a bit of an overkill with this needle but it just goes through quickly and makes my life easy when I'm doing this so I'm going to come in from the inside of my book the middle hole and go out to the outside of my book and pull my cord through you want to hold this tail with your finger or put it underneath one of those clips. Come into the top or bottom, either one, into the center. And you see how nicely it is when you hold it with your clips, how nice it stays in place. No worries at all. Okay, then I'm in at the top. I went out through the center. I came in from the top. And I'm going to take it all the way down to the bottom and go out the other side. Okay. So now you can see that went from the inside to the outside in the center. And then I came in from the outside up through the top and all the way down to the bottom and came out the bottom. And now I'm back here and I'm going to go back in through my center hole, being careful not to put the needle through my cord. Bring it back in through the hole, up through the center. And that's my three hole pamphlet stitch. I'm pulling it off my needle and I'll tie a knot in this. After I pull one cord, I can take these off now and make it easier for you to see the book. I want one of my tails to go under my cord in the center and one of my tails to come to the other side. So I think you can see that this is on top of both the cords, one on one side and one on the other. I'm going to pull that tightly, not so tight as to tear my pages but tight enough that you have like I call a guitar string um, tightness in your cord. Makes it look pretty and finished. And then I'm going to tie a knot. And this is waxed cord. It's very waxed. I like this um, extra waxed cord. Pull it tightly and it will hold against itself with just the first knot because it's waxed. But I am going to put the second knot in just to make sure it's not going anywhere for a long, 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 long time. I want this little music maestro's book to last him or her many, many concerts. All right. Now, what you can do, if you like, is you can leave one of your cords long or both of them to tie like a charm or a bead or something on it um, when it's finished. So I think I'm going to leave one just in case. I can always cut it off at the end of making my journal but it'll be there if I want to add some decoration. Kind of push that down against the cord. It'll hold in place. All right, so that's a three-hole 
pamphlet stitch, just a basic, basic um, binding for a signature. And this again is a mini size journal and it's gonna be a little chunky. So I'll probably, I'm not sure, I may end up putting a closure. And if I do, I'll probably use a paper button on one side or the other and then just take a string, bring it around and just give it a little tie. I don't know, that will be yet to be seen depending on how large it does get after I decorate it. But isn't it nice, nice and sturdy? And I could just imagine somebody, you know, sliding it into their vest pocket or into their purse. And um, I'm looking forward to decorating this journal. So I hope you enjoyed this quick little tutorial on putting in a pamphlet stitch. This is a three hole pamphlet stitch. You can also decorate these if you want with beads and things before you sew it in. All kinds of all kinds of things to do with this simple, simple stitch. So I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I hope you'll um, give a like on it. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to my channel and watch for more um, as I keep going on with other pa paper crafting and items that I like to do in the Love and Whimsy studio. Have a wonderful day. And thanks again for watching. This is Bev at Bev's Creating with Love and Whimsy.